and you said there were four assets that you really favored and would quote unquote go to war with and cash was one of yeah. them so you're starting the list yeah. the other three were um, gold productive land and blue chip u.s equities so could you finish whatever comment you have about cash and then let us know what yeah. you think about those other three yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll tell you, I'll just say right now, I still agree with that. I think that those four assets should make up the the majority of your portfolio, right? And perhaps you're maybe a little overweight or underweight, one of them, but I think it's important. I, I, I have a long-term portfolio, which I don't really mess with too much because in general, assets go up and to the right over long periods of time. So I don't want to let my short-term beliefs of what the market's going to do overly influenced my long-term portfolio that says you want to be in productive assets. But then in that, in when I, in my more tactical portfolio and my shorter term portfolio, I think that, uh, you know, I think equities are going to go lower. Let's call it over the next six months uh, into the end of the year, into the first quarter. I think we're going to have another hard sell off. Um, at that point, I think it's very possible that I would want to get bullish on us equities because I think at that time we may be getting into the whole, Part of the milkshake theory where global capital is flying to the US, perhaps even the Fed is doing QE at that point. And not only are we, you know, putting the QE that the, the Fed is providing into the market, but the rest of the world is sending their money to the market, to the US market as well. Um, but I and I but I think these, I think at that time, I think that would actually be good for the dollar. I don't think that would necessarily be bad for the dollar. Um, we'll, we'll have to wait and see kind of how they do it, but. Um, you know, I think everybody should own gold in their portfolio. I think that's a typical, you know, over long periods of time, gold does well. Gold hasn't done great in U.S. dollar terms um, for a long time, but, you know, it's done great in yen terms. It's done pretty good in euro terms. It's done great in other currency terms. Um, and I think it, you're, I don't think you're going to lose a lot by having gold in your portfolio. And then, you know, what I do with, with, the, with the shorter term buckets, I do a number of speculative short term trades. And, and some of those ha are very high risk, very high reward. Some of them maybe we hold for a couple of weeks, but um, long story short, I do think that we're going to have volatility in the equity markets and risk, global risk assets over the next six months. Uh, and then after that, I'll just have to reassess. All right, great. A couple of quick clarifying answers on this, then we'll start wrapping things up. Yep. Um, so, um, well, let's start with gold first. So you said um, it's done great in other currencies besides the dollar, but it's been disappointing for dollar holders that have been owning gold. Um, yep. You know, a lot of people scratch their head and say, why? Like, we, we, we finally got the inflation that we, <laughs> we thought was coming and we owned the gold beforehand and it really disappointed. So it, it, can you can you demystify yeah. for folks why gold's been disappointing in U.S. dollars? Yeah, I think so. And I, I, I hesitate to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway, because I always kind of get hate mail whenever I say this. But, but I think it's very, very important for gold proponents or people that have owned gold or that you know, have owned gold or they're planning on gold to keep a level head about gold. I, I'm actually a huge advocate for gold. I think everybody should own it in their portfolio. But the simple truth is that over the last 10 years, gold did not help you very much if you're a US dollar investor. Now, in other currencies, it did well, but over the last 10 years, it did not. And if you look at gold miners, if you look at the GDX ETF, and you look at the GDXJ ETF, and if you look at the Barron's Gold or the Philadelphia Gold Mining Index that goes back to the, so GDX goes about uh, back about 10 years. GDXJ goes back, I think, 15 years, and the Philadelphia Gold Miners Index goes back, I think, 40 years. Since inception, all of those indexes are down. Down, not, not positive at all, they're down. And, that's not to say that you shouldn't own gold miners. It's not to say that they can't provide an incredible amount of value. The, the point I'm making is don't be so certain and put all of your money in that because it might not happen right away. Um, so I, I continue to believe that everybody should have gold in their portfolio. I do not think it should be you know, your whole portfolio. Um, to me, I, I, I'm comfortable having up to 25% in gold depending on someone's personal situation. Uh, but I don't think that should be the only asset. And in most cases, it probably should not be 25%. But I do, I do think it's very important to own gold. If you are not a US dollar uh, you know, denominated investor, then I think it's even more important to own gold. If you are a US dollar investor, I think you own gold and think of it as an insurance policy. Don't think of it as your get rich quick scheme. The reason that gold hasn't done well, in my opinion, is it hasn't had to do well. 
In other words, whenever a currency comes into crisis, gold does very well in that currency. But you know what? Despite all the protestations, the US dollar has not come into crisis in the last 15 years. It just hasn't. Now you can, you can say that it will, but it just hasn't yet. And so as a result, it hasn't had to do well. But I would say that if the dollar comes into crisis or if the dollar dramatically loses value, I think gold will do very, very well. And when that time comes, you'll be glad that you have some gold. Okay. Um, I, I got to parse this now because you just spent yep. the whole interview telling us why oh, sorry. The, the dollar is going to strengthen from here, you believe, but yet you still own a whole bunch of gold. So um, is it that you believe there's a dollar crisis somewhere in the future or? Well, I think so. It kind of goes back to, to, to the point you made earlier. It's possible that all fiat currencies lose value, even though the dollar is rising versus other fiat currencies. That is possible. I, I, I will not deny that that is possible. Um, and it's also, and it's part of my thesis is that we will get into a period where the US dollar and gold will rise together versus all other currencies and against many other assets. We're just not there yet. All right. And that was my um, next question. So yeah. what leads you to think that, that they both will? Well, because I think, again, there's this idea that you cannot have a rising dollar and inflation together. That it's, it's completely wrong. Of course, you can have inflation and a rising dollar, or, or maybe I should say a rising DXY, right? The mm -hmm. dollar index can absolutely go higher and have uh, inflation in the United States. That can absolutely happen. If, if, you, if you doubt that this is possible, then ask yourself if your, standard, if your cost of living is higher today than it was 15 years ago. And if your cost of living is higher today than it was 15 years ago, and then you go look at the DXY index from 15 years ago and you realize the DXY is up 20% or more, then now you had a rising DXY and in inflationary pressures, right? So it can absolutely happen. And I think as we get further into this crisis, I don't think people will put all of their money into the dollar. I just think the money that, you know, I think they'll put a lot of it in the dollar, but they'll probably start putting money into gold as well, right? And if we get into a sovereign debt crisis where, you know, government bonds are being, you know, uh, rejected and nobody wants to buy government bonds, well, then that's going to open up new uh, assets to receive those flows. I think U.S. equities would be one of them, but I think gold would be one of them as well. So I, I don't consider myself a stock picker, but in general, I would favor big, large U.S. blue chips. And, and I'm going to say a few names, a few stocks. This is not a recommendation for these stocks, but I would just say stocks similar to these. Um, something like Coca-Cola, right? It's a huge U.S. blue chip battleship company that pays a nice dividend. Something like Philip Morris, which is for the most part recession proof and pays a very nice dividend. Something like Lockheed Martin, which is a has government defense contractor and is probably going to continue to have government contracts for the foreseeable future and pays a nice dividend, right? Um, anything kind of agricultural related, because I think that is going to be, um, you know, a, an area of growth, something that's energy related, you know, maybe the big oil producers or, or whoever it is, um, and then that pays a nice dividend. Th those are the types of companies that I would be looking to allocate capital to. All right, great. Um, well, as we wrap up here, Brent, any last parting bits of advice for the regular investor who's just looking to kind of, you know, prudently protect and grow their wealth through this, what you've said is likely to be an increasingly volatile time going forward? I, th I think what I would say is that, in my opinion, a little bit of knowledge is one of the most dangerous things in the world because you, you, you learn something new and now all of a sudden you think you know everything and you go and you put your whole portfolio on this new idea that you discovered. And I would say, don't do that. Don't, you don't need to go, don't, that I can think of very few reasons you should ever go all in on something. Um, a 10% position in a portfolio is an absolutely enormous position. Most professional money managers don't have more than four or 5% in, in one single position. And, and, and in many of them would consider that a big position. So, you know, keep a level head, don't go all in on everything. And, and, and Anytime you get certain about something, you should check yourself because there is no certainties. So keep an open mind. If somebody says something that you think is unlikely, it's fine to think it's unlikely, but you should probably at least consider how that could possibly happen. 